Hello, good morning, everybody. A warm welcome to you all to the webinar conducted by Gem Atlas. Today's webinar will be conducted by Mr. Dilip Bhatt, CEO of GJSCI, Gems and Jewelry Skill Council of India. We are very thankful to Mr. Bhatt and GJSCI for conducting this webinar for us today. Uh, if you have any questions during this session, you can post it on the questions panel available to you on the right hand side. We shall take all the questions post the presentation is over. Now I hand over the presentation to Mr. Bhatt to take it forward from here. Thanks a lot, Sachin, and good morning, good evening, good night, uh, whichever part of the world everybody is in. My name is Vineet Bhatt, and uh, on behalf of GJSCI, I'm here for to talk about why scaling and the need for scaling in India. Uh, I'll give you a brief background about myself. Uh, I've been in the gems and jewelry industry for since 1986, quit the industry for a short time, became a corporate trainer, and now I'm back in the industry uh, doing what I do best, training as well as jewelry. So here we go. Uh, the topic is uh, need for skilling in India, and uh, let me tell you at the onset that all the views that are there in this uh, PowerPoint presentation are mine. So Jem Atlas or anybody else has nothing to do with it. So anybody has an objection, you come and get get grab hold of me. All right. Uh, here we go. What is skill? The definition says an ability and capacity acquired through deliberate, systematic, and sustained effort to smoothly and adaptively carry out complex, complex activities or job functions involving ideas which are uh, known as cognitive skills and things which are known as technical skills and or people. See, we all are born with certain skills and we all have these skills inbuilt in us. It's up to us how we hone them. You know, uh, Somebody who is, let's say, a, a CEO of... Uh, for example, Ms. Indra Nui, who is the CEO of uh, Pepsi. Now, she has this amazing skill of uh, cooking. And, you know, her cooking, as what I've read, can put some of the star Michelin's uh, chef to shame. So that is a skill. But then as far as work is concerned, she is hands-on running the Pepsi empire. So skills are born in us. They are with us. Sometimes people uh, recognize their skills pretty early on and work on them. And sometimes, you know, people recognize their skills probably after the age of retirement. So it depends uh, how early you recognize what you have and, uh, you know, try to make the best of it. Uh, there is this hierarchy of skills. So, you know, it's, it's on the left hand side, you may, you can see know, play, work, solve and invent. And on the right hand side, you can see student, apprentice, specialist, expert and craftsman. So the most basic in this pyramid is the student life. Now, you can be a student at the age of 60. You can be a student age, at the age of 6. Whenever you start learning something new, you are a student. So it doesn't mean you have to go to school to learn something or a college. The base level, that's where you gather knowledge about anything, about any particular vocation, about a particular business line, about a particular uh, academic line. Next level is apprentice. So you have acquired the knowledge. Now you are testing and at the same time motivational use of your knowledge. What is motivational use of your knowledge? That you are motivated within yourself or something else which motivates you to use that particular knowledge which you have gained. <laughs> but when you are using it, you are also testing that how much you know. So that is the kind of second level. So on the left side, you will see play, which means you are playing around with your knowledge. You know, you are not, you are experimenting with your knowledge. The third level where, you know, you reach after doing both these is the specialist. Where you put in a purposeful use of your knowledge. It could be like a top-notch heart surgeon who spent 12 years, you know, after his MBBS and specializing in, in, in cardiology and cardiac surgery. He's learned 
under somebody all these years he's experimented this that but now he's reached that level that he's called a specialist now he starts taking on surgeries so that level is is specialist which then can be determined as a purposeful work next would be the expert years of doing specialized work you know years of doing specialized work makes one an expert let's say if you you know how to make a square roti the indian bread and it's precisely 10 uh, 10 cm by 10 cm and you've been practicing it all your life and then suddenly you you 50 and somebody wakes you up at you know 2 o'clock in the night and you still make that 10 cm by 10 cm ka square roti so that makes you an expert you know so and when you reach the expert level you are able to solve complex things you are able to give guidance to a lot of people you are able to come up with new and different solutions other than the tried and tested ones and the highest level is the craftsman the craftsman after spending many of his years and all those years of experience of being a student an apprentice a specialist an expert will now invent you know this person will now start inventing different processes different techniques of doing the same thing different uh types of different streams of the same amount of knowledge so this is the highest level in the hierarchy of skills somebody can achieve now when we talk about skilling who are the stakeholders and we'll talk about india let's face it uh we have the government we have the industry we have the trainers and we have the individuals by now by trainers i mean it could be all those educational and vocational institutions agencies colleges schools xyz everything industry is the arena of business where these trained or skilled person will go and perform this would be aided by the government or non aided by the government and individuals are of course people like you and me so you have two types of learning you know one is skill based the other one is knowledge based you might think what is the difference between skill based and knowledge based so here's the difference knowledge gives you theoretical information acquired about any subject theoretical information which means the light travels at 186000 miles per second or the moon is xyz distance away from us or that the water that we drink has uh, h2o so hydrogen and oxygen mixed together all this is theory all this is theoretical knowledge something which has been proved in theory whereas in skills you get practical application of the knowledge somebody actually gets to fly down to the moon and comes back and says listen the surface of the moon is like this or somebody actually gets to take two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen and gets to mix them and make water so this is what skills is about knowledge can be taught we all go to schools we all go to colleges we all go to various institutions we all read books we go online to gather knowledge we all have online tutorials so i mean knowledge can be taught and skills require practical exposure and can also be inborn and if you remember right at the onset i said you know skills are inborn and i am a firm believer of skills which are inborn in a person they require practical exposure for example somebody may feel i am a good designer you know he or she knows how to draw well he or she knows how to render or sketch or you know mix colors well that is a skill now how do you hone that skill into an art so the person has to go to an institute where this skill is being developed 
So he or she will go to a jewelry designing institute and learn. But on the other hand, somebody who does not have that skill, like for me, I can't draw a circle to save my life. So somebody like me who goes to a jewelry designing institute and starts designing, though I have the knowledge, do you think I will have the skills to become a designer? I don't think so. Knowledge will tell me what to do. Skills will make me what I do. So that, that is the difference. You know? Knowledge you can acquire through books, media, encyclopedia, academic institutions and various other sources. Skills can only and only be honed through training. Continuous training. As we again, if we go back to the previous slide, if you see, you start as a student, then you become an apprentice, then you become a specialist, then you become an expert, and then finally you are a craftsman for your skills. So this, this, is, this is the basic difference. Uh, ultimately, both knowledge and skill, both are required to master a field of study. You have the knowledge, but you don't have the skill. You have the skill, but you don't have the knowledge. You know, these, both these things are imperative in making somebody a highly skilled artisan. You know, artisan does not mean somebody who sits and works for you or somebody who is doing some kind of an artistic work. For example, I would call J.R.D. Tata an artisan of business. He had the knowledge and he had the skill. I would call Dhirubhani, Dhirubhai Ambani, I would call Steve Jobs, I would call... Bill Gates, any of these famous famous names in business as artisans, you know, because they had the skill of identifying what people want. They had the skill of forecasting things of the future and they honed their skills through knowledge. So both these things, when combined together, make a very deadly potent combination which always works. Uh, this is a global chart of, uh, you know, how, how skilled people are compared to the Indian mentality or the Indian educational mentality where a degree, that certificate of, you know, uh, 20 inches by 18 inches or is so very revered and skills are not. Whereas there are other countries across the world where skill is revealed. You can look at the top of the chart is Sweden, then Hungary, then Spain, the United States, then Germany, then Russia, a country like Colombia, look at them, Japan, Portugal, Ireland, Mexico, Canada, Luxembourg, Brazil, Australia. All of these countries put skill on the map. Obviously there is knowledge but they put skill of doing something on their important list. You go further down and you have a country like Chile, then you have France, then you have United Kingdom and then it goes down Austria, China and Poland and then negative skilling which means they require n number of people for skilling which I have not yet been skilled. You look at the, the famous countries, you have New Zealand, you have Czech Republic, the Netherlands, Denmark, Hong Kong, our own India, Switzerland, Singapore, Italy, Belgium. So the list is on and on. Top of the line, it's not there in the chart for some strange reason. I'll have to check why. South Korea is the highest skilled nation in the world. Where 96% of the population is skilled and has taken a skillful, knowledgeable path in their life. So you might have a doctor there, but who's also skilled as a plumber. You might have an engineer there, but who's also skilled as a cook. 
you might have an uh, uh, commercial pilot over there who is also skilled as an auto mechanic. How many countries in the world can boast something like this where you have and the emphasis is really on skilling. Tell me one thing, we all have uh, running water in our houses. What happens when the water supply is blocked? What do you do? You hunt for a plumber, right? What if that plumber does not have that necessary skill to do all his handiwork and switch on the water? Imagine your life without 24 hours of water. Imagine you don't find a plumber because everybody is doing an MBA. Everybody is doing an, their engineering. Everybody is doing their chartered accountancy. You don't have a plumber. Why? Because it's it's seen in India as a low skill job. It's it's a low market, down market skill which needs to be acquired. Imagine your life without a driver where in the famous Bombay traffic from Bandra to uh, if you had to come to Marine Line, it takes you about one hour to two hours in peak traffic and you're sitting behind the wheel and that to going and coming so you waste or invest four hours in the day and you don't get good drivers. What are you going to do? Because all the drivers, they think driver being a driver is, is something which is very, very low. I'm not going to be a driver. I would rather be an MBA. I would rather be a CA. What are you going to do? See, these are some of the points which a lot of people miss. We'll talk about these later on. Let's talk about why skilling. India's working age population is expected to rise by 12.5 crore over the coming decade. <coughs> Sorry, I had a bad cold two days back. <coughs> the lack of a job-ready workforce is one of the biggest constraints facing Indian industry. According to a study by 2022, India is going to be the youngest country in the whole world with an average age of 26.4. Whereas all the other developed manufacturing countries like China or Turkey or whatever you call it, they would be old countries. Now, what do countries do when their population is old and cannot manufacture? They outsource it. Where should they outsource it? To India. Because it's going to be the youngest country in the world. See, this is the need right now to understand why this skill development movement is very, very important. The lack of job-ready workforce is one of the biggest constraints facing Indian industry. There is a big, big demand and supply gap. There is a huge demand in construction. There is a huge demand in, in, in plumbing. There is a huge demand in aviation. There is a huge demand in hospitality and healthcare. But the trained or skilled staff is not there. We all have seen that most people in India who are into non-academic kind of uh, working environment have acquired their skills through somebody. In the gems and jewelry industry, there are hardly any institutes which teach a person how to become a jeweler, how to make pieces of jewelry. So how do all these karigars, as we call them, they learn, they learn on the job, which is, which is a good thing. But their knowledge is not, not precise. Their knowledge is not perfect. You know, when some people come and tell them that so-and-so alloy is, has to be mixed with this to get a particular result, they say, hello, I've been doing this since the last 20 years and who are you going to teach me? But when they do it with an open mind, they learn, oh my God, you know, I, I was doing this since the last 20 years, but I still don't know this. Why? Because a proper skilling approach has not been established. You know, most uh, Asian countries like, again, South Korea, Taiwan and all that, 
a driver before being given a license is also put through a small auto mechanic course why because what if he is driving and the car breaks down he doesn't know so probably he'll have to call somebody so that's a waste of time a risk whatever you call it but what if the fault is small and he being skilled as an auto mechanic to a basic level can start the car and take it to the garage but how many of our drivers here in india who learn on the job so as to say kyunki wo pehle kapda marta hai kapda mar ke gaadi ka chabi leta hai after he takes the key starts फिर थोड़ा गियर आगे पीछे कर का है आपका ही गाड़ी पे हाथ साफ करना यू नो टर्म कॉल्ड हाथ साफ करना तो आपका गाड़ी पे वो हाथ साफ करके ड्राइविंग सीखता है ड्राइविंग स्कूल क्यों जाते हैं जस्ट टू टेक अ लाइसेंस ओके सो डज ही नो हाउ टू ओपन द बॉनेट डज ही नो व्हाट व्हेन ही और शी हैज टू डू आफ्टर ओपनिंग द बॉनेट नो सो this would be a you know a kind of a vertical integration of skilling that a driver should also learn about being an auto mechanic then coming to the third point skilling of young workforce can lead to high productivity economic growth and upward social mobility the biggest problem facing our country as of now is unemployment at the same time rising population what happens when there is a very high unemployability a very high growth of young population but there is there are no bridges to supply them to skill these people and to supply them to the demand industries you know efforts have been on now but probably this should have had been thought of and done at least 30 40 years back so right now there is a huge young workforce being ready you know but without any skilling do you think they will gain employability i don't think so and even if they are skilled he needs to be bridged and properly placed in the proper industry so those bridges right now do not exist you know so it is like an unemployed unskilled youth is equal to an unemployed and skilled youth there is no difference so if those bridges are built and if the skilling is done properly this will lead to high productivity which means people will have a job they will move up in their socio economic structure crimes will reduce there are lots of other possibilities you know i mean we not here to talk about those but uh, definitely it will lead to economic growth and upward social mobility then an enormous gap between the skills needed by the industry and what academia is producing is resulting in a deep fracture in the talent supply chain you have factories of mbas these days you have factories of medical colleges you have factories of engineering colleges you have factories of chartered accountant colleges fine all those are required but what about skilling colleges what about vocational colleges what about the other skills that guide the life you go to a restaurant and somebody greets you and you tell them okay what's the special today and he says well we have the same dish which we have been serving since the last 30 years so you like why you don't have a cook or what no 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 we have somebody he is an engineer by profession he comes once in a while and cooks this is the scenario you would have if the current system of producing engineers and mbas and doctors and engineers you know go on and on we need people in other parts of life also we need cooks we need drivers we need jewelry artisans we need painters you name it and we need them 
the society per se at large needs such skilled people for which there is a huge huge demand supply gap an expected gap of 3.4 million individuals in the gems and jewelry sector can you imagine in 10 years my industry the gems and jewelry industry will require 3.4 million people but we don't have them employers on their own will will not invest enough on skilling employees and employees have limited ability and willingness to pay for skilling employees say why would i skill somebody the moment i skill somebody he is going to ask for more salary or he will go somewhere else to abhi jahan pe hai wahan pe rehne do mera to kaam nikal raha hai employee bolega mera koi yahan growth nahi hai kuch karna nahi hai main 10 saal se wahi kaam kar raha hu अब क्या स्किलिंग करूंगा मुझे आके कौन सिखाएगा सो देर इज इज यू नो हॉर्स इज ब्लिंकर्स यू नो दैट टिपिकल माइंड सेट के भाई ऐसा ही है ऐसा ही करना है सो द नीड ऑफ द आर इज टू थिंक डिफरेंटली यू नो एपल्स टैग लाइन थिंक डिफरेंटली एम्प्लॉयज हैव टू थिंक एम्प्लॉयर्स हैव टू थिंक एवरी हैज टू थिंक ऑन स्किलिंग then you need to create a very strong pull game plan has to change completely based on creating a strong pull a strong pull towards skilling what could be the possible strategies create an environment that places all skills high up there with knowledge or even higher today you go to a, a tier 2 tier 3 city in india and you have a proper household and you have a girl who is about to be married <coughs> and there are two proposals one is of a plumber who is earning 40000 rupees a month and you have another proposal of a bank clerk who is earning 20000 rupees a month invariably the father of the girl will give the hand to the clerk and not the plumber why because plumbing is seen as a demeaning job प्लम्बर के साथ शादी कर रहा हूं क्यों ये तो बैंक का क्लर्क है चालीस साल में मैनेजर बनेगा दिस इज द मेंटालिटी वी नीड टू चेंज एंड आई एम अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग बिलीवर ऑफ दिस दैट अ पर्सन ही और शी रिगार्डलेस ऑफ द एकेडमिक क्वालिफिकेशन ही और शी हैज शुड बी नोन एंड रिस्पेक्टेड एंड वैल्यूड बाय द स्किल्स दैट दे हैव in their particular industry media campaigns and programs highlighting skilled work recently the government has started you know like since last year highlighting you know skills nsdc has uh, this on tere andar tere raste it's a very nice uh, uh, song which actually tells you that come on you have the skills inside you why don't you go out and bring them full on so media campaigns need to be done then you have to you can start a registry of skilled people that is available online and make certification of existing skills free simple and easy to start with you want a domestic worker like my wife is always complaining that bhai nahi hai bhai nahi hai bhai nahi hai and bhai ke hisab se meri duniya chalti hai by the way you know we have to eat before the bhai comes you have to take shower before the bhai comes what is that perennial bhai or the domestic help goes away Do you have a website or do you have a helpline you can call? अरे मेरा पुराना कारीगर गया बाई गई अभी कोई नया भेज दो We don't have. Though domestic household cleaning and work is a skill, you know, it's a uh, work of art. So we need to make a registry of all these skilled people. Then promote skills upgradation programs for all working people, permanent whether they are permanently employed, contract workers, self-employed. regardless of whether they are in unskilled or semi skilled jobs and provide them part subsidies and simple no interest loans so they can repay over a period of time so this is very simple and initiate early include in the school syllabus elements that familiarize children with work life and ready them for it without giving a full vocational course in india probably we can do this in the 9th and the 10th standard children can be exposed to various skills such as cooking uh, jewelry designing aviation you know being a pilot 
राधर देन द फिक्स कोर्सेज ऑफ बेटा क्या करेगा बड़ा होके मम्मा मैं तो एम बी ए करूँ बेटा क्या करेगा मैं तो डॉक्टर बनूंगा वाई कांट वी हैव अ मदर हु एस्पायर्स अ चाइल्ड टू बी अ कुक यू नो वाई कांट वी हैव अ पेरेंट हु एस्पायर्स अ डॉटर और अ सन टू बी अ फैशन डिजाइनर और अ ज्वेलरी डिजाइनर दीज आर स्किल्स एंड वेन दीज डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ ऑफ skills are exposed to them at an early age let's say in the 8th standard 9th standard 10th standard in school give them a taste of it they will know what actually they are good in it and if somebody loves cooking they will know in the 9th or 10th standard hello i want to be a chef i want to grow up have my own restaurant so these all these things need to be initiated early building a new sustainable institution and processes 10 years of schooling this is my statement 10 years of schooling on an average is not only an unemployable but also untrainable when i teach you know i teach sometimes and i ask kids that uh, what have you done in your life and they say i am a graduate and i say okay what have you done in your life and they say i am a graduate i said good you are a graduate what else have you done in your life and that's it they they don't know they are graduate they are fine how many people how many graduates are there how many mbas are there how many people are out there with degrees but no gainful employment you know so fine academia should be there but along with academics you know i would like to cite the example of the german dual learning system here where what happens somebody in germany after let's say they are 10 standard wants to do an automotive engineering this is just an example which is true so the college has tied up with factories of mercedes benz or or for bmw or for any any of those uh, brands so the guy learns theory for one month and then he goes and apprentices for six months in that particular factory then he comes back again and learns for a year he again goes back and apprentice in the factory for 6 months this is how they actually learn you know this is how they actually learn to put their theoretical knowledge in practice and hone their skills the need of the r is to have a dual learning system like this we need people who are trainable you know people who lack soft skills poor reading and comprehension no understanding of measurement and basic quantitative work are all major weaknesses of most children reaching standard 8 or 10 as well as dropouts which is a major proportion of the indian population recently we had we were doing a, a i mean i came across this particular thing that people from one state migrate to another state for gainful employment so they for for example people from orissa come to gujarat come to surat for diamond cutting and processing and there they are exploited in terms of their wage exploited in terms of their uh, working hours what if they were trained in the art of diamond cutting and polishing right there in orissa and then come to gujarat you know so they are trainable people we have a huge pool of people who can be trained but we need a robust system which gives them that skill you know they, which gives them that kind of training so we need a massive bridging program for the push outs of school and systems that make them trainable somebody who has cleared out 10th standard does not have any other you know kind of an objective in life ke bhai main kya karega to he'll go to a garage and work as a mechanic he'll go to a hotel and start you know cleaning dishes or waiting at table why cannot we have schools or institutions pan india where they are skilled in the so that when he is employable after you know his trainable stage he's acquired that skill and he is employable he goes to a restaurant and says listen this is what i know and this is what my payment or wage should be you know he'll have a definitely a better chance at growing up in life
Now, these are the challenges. 2.3% of the total workforce in India have undergone formal skin training as compared to 68% in the UK and 52% in the US and 96% in North Korea. 2.3% ladies and gentlemen. You know, you see where we come from. India has a legacy of skilling. India has has had a university called Nalanda University 5,000 years back, which apart from teaching them the scriptures and the Vedas, they also trained them to be potters and paint uh, craftsmen and in other different forms of art. We have a rich philosophy of skilling. Unfortunately, in the last 400 years, that philosophy has been lost due to various socio-economic and political reasons. We need to get it back. We need to put skill into young India. We need to see the entire young workforce which is going to arise in the next 10 years. We need to give them skills and not degrees and diplomas, which are absolutely useless out there. You know, I give one ad for a data entry consultant or a data entry operator in our GJSCI office and we get MBAs lined up to work for that, then what is the use of such a degree? It is also perceived as a last resort meant for those who have not been able to progress in the formal academic system. 12th mein char bar fail hua, kya karega? Chal garage mein ghus ja. So why not we have a school which teaches him in auto repair, you know? Then ground level implementation of skill policies, alignment of student aspirations with industry expectations on salaries and job roles. <clears throat> industry should come out. You know, they need to come out and say, this is, these are our demands. This is what we expect. So we expect 10,000 jewelry designers. We expect 10,000 CAD CAM workers. We expect 10, 20,000 or 1 lakh retail associates. If the industry comes out and says that this is what we want and the skilling institutions can channel the youth who are acquiring their skills under them, I think this would be an ideal scenario. They need to convince employers to hike the skill force rather than looking for a cheaper resource. <coughs> People are always into cost cutting. And, you know, cost cutting, apart from the uh, brick and mortar infrastructure, would also lead to human infrastructure. You know, when I used to train, I used to meet a lot of human resources managers. And I used to tell them to change their human resources, which is HR, to HA, which means human assets. Resources always get depleted. Assess, assets, they always multiply. So, employers need to look at they are human resources, not as resources, but as assets. Uh, we will talk about a little bit on, on Skill India now. Uh, the Prime Minister's office on this 15th of July released this particular logo and the entire campaign, which is much, much near of the hour, which is called Skill India. Kaushal Bharat, Kushal Bharat. Uh, this is a little bit on the program and I've, I think I've taken a lot of time. So we just have five minutes before we go to the questions. So the objective is to create opportunities and scope of the development of talent. Okay, the talent. The key word over here is talent and not the degrees. Of Indian new to develop more of these sectors which have already been put under skill development. Then features. What will come out of the whole thing? It will give you employment. It improves entrepreneurship and training programs in line with international levels and it will develop need based programs. Today, let's say in, in this country, one of the biggest need is of a security personnel. But what happens? You get somebody from Bihar or UP, you tell him how to salute, you tell him how to sign in a register. You give him a uniform, you give him a cap or security guard bandha. Fortunately, the government has a security sector skill council also, where they are doing fantastic work in training people how to be 
a secu proper security guard so this these are the initiatives you know which will take india forward uh, the advantages are to raise confidence improve productivity give direction through proper skill development which everything will lead to economic growth uh this is a bit on skill india you have the ministry of uh, skill development and entrepreneurship which is uh, headed by uh, honorary shri rajiv pratap rudi uh, then along with that uh, they have made a national skill development corporation which is nsdc which whom we deal uh, all the time and they have uh, various different sector skill councils you can see here gems and jewelry automobiles retail construction beauty wellness and so on and so forth so all these sector skill councils are responsible for development of skills i repeat development of skills or skill development in their respective sectors a little bit on the gjsci which is us uh, it's a sector skill council for gems and jewelry sector in india the areas and functions of the industry include these four sub categories which are cast and diamond set manufacturing diamond processing gemstone processing handmade gold and gem set manufacturing and obviously retail so these are the five areas in we as a sector skill council have to promote and develop skills or uh, these are our uh, various responsibilities you can actually go on uh, our website and check them out for a short of time Uh, these are some of our current programs in the the year of 2015 recognition of prior learning rpl then pmkvy uh, e learning program which we've just launched you know people can learn they can download an entire learning platform on their smartphones and acquire skills to be a jewelry retail sales associate then we do world skills competition uh there's this remote internship program which we have initiated with the government of kerala <clears throat> what happened was that uh, peop the women especially in kerala were not allowed to step outside their respective towns to work and some of them are really beautiful uh, artists you know designers so we at gjsci lined up with five six companies in seeps which will give them remote internship so they will get all their designing brief via email and via skype they will talk to the designer head designer in the factory via skype understand what they want they will design at their residences then again they will scan those designs send it to them and if those designs are selected jewelry would be manufactured and exported to various countries across the world so a girl sitting in uh, let's say thrissur in kerala will be able to make jewelry for macy's in new york so that is the program what we've come up with another one is daksha gram which uh, is a very ambitious program of our chairman uh, what we want to do is uh, take all these carigars or artisans who work in a very unhealthy environment you know with damages their uh, health and as well as with leads to very very low productivity so we need to take them and shift them to a very organized kind of a setup where they have a good chance to be healthy work with better equipment and come up with very high productivity uh, this is about rpl and pmkvy this is the e learning platform which i just spoke about we just launched this and it is going to be operational from monday onwards monday the october 7 uh, jewelry retail dot in and this is the world skill competition and we are very very proud that you know somebody from india came at the fourth you know position in in world in the jewelry competition apart from the other sector skill council where they have actually won medals So yeah, we have this huge program going on, and uh, definitely we're going to get a medal next time when you know it's going to be held in in Abu Dhabi. All uh, this is as what I mentioned, remote internship. Uh, this is the Daksha Gram. You can see on the top, 
the kind of facility, the workers, 96% of Indian jewelry artisans work in this kind of a setup, which damages their life and life expectancy. And at the bottom, you see another photograph. That is where we want to take them. So we've acquired some land in Calcutta and we're talking to the government of Maharashtra and other state governments for us to give us land so we can, you know, uh, take the entire polluted setup from one place and put them in an organized sector in another place. Uh, this is a quote from Mahatma Gandhi, which is a favorite of mine. India has made a tryst with its demographic destiny. Skilling its youth is giving a chance to redeem this pledge. So friends, uh, this brings us to the end of my uh, 45 minutes with you. I hope I haven't bored you. And uh, time is on for now questions. So we open the platform for questions. You On your screen, you will see the icon where you can type your questions and send. Jai Hind. I have a question from Latish Cheda, which says, can skill be acquired without knowledge? Skills can be acquired without knowledge. But when you mix knowledge and skills together, that would bring the ultimate use of your skills. So you have to, I mean, I could be a natural born driver. You know, I could be, I, I could race in a NASCOM or any of these F1 races. But if I have the knowledge of the tire pressure and the velocity and the wind speed and everything, it would make me a better Formula 1 champion. Uh, which are the causes of GJSCI? This is a question by Bhavesh Shah. I think you will need to call us on that because uh, this would involve, you know, a personal kind of a dialogue. So, yeah, but we have uh, causes can be available at your factory premises. Yes, for sure. A good one on menu of 30 years. Thank you, Shivram. Again, Mr. Shivram A. Then we have Sarla Shah. What are the efforts that industry can take to improve the skills of the employees? Well, industry per se needs to continue skilling. It needs to continue the cycle of imparting skills to their workforce or their human assets. If you are looking at profitability, all those people in the industry, listen to me, skill your workers. The higher you skill them, the higher their productivity, the higher their productivity, higher your profitability. So that's for you. Uh, there is one by Palesh, Palash Kandar. Many colleges and institutions claim to train students practically. What's your views? You use the word, my friend, claim. So the claim has to be verified and, uh, you know, if an institute claims to train, then you have to verify their claim. And if they are actually training, then it's a good institute. Oh, as per record, blah, blah, 2,500 jewelry design passing. Rajita, what could be the probable reason? The probable reason in all my years being in the jewelry industry is A, they lose passion. Out of the 2,500 designers, most of them are because the family is in the jewelry business and they have told them to be a designer. B, they think they are good jewelry designers because they can draw. C, the biggest reason, they lack the passion. You know, when it is thought as an earns, a means to earn money, there is no passion for that skill. Very few people who have that passion They've reached, reached like dizzying heights in, in terms of jewelry designing. So that's your answer. In India, we have a Yogesh Desai who's left. But the question is good. In India, what are the challenges faced by traditional artisan? Many, many challenges. Environmental ch challenges. Economical challenges. Uh, safety and hazard challenges. Intellectual property rights challenges. So all of these are challenges and at for our sector, GJSCI, we are doing our bit 
to educate and train these workers into various things. Uh, Rajita R again. <clears throat> How do new designers create their own brands? Or do you think? Uh, I think for Rajita, this uh, you can probably call me on the landline of GJCI on Monday between uh, 11 and 1. I will answer that. Our next one is by uh, Ajay Marfatia in our country. If our country has to move higher, top on the chart, what our large corporate should do to get corporate? I'm afraid I didn't get that question, but if I have understood you correctly, then the corporates must impart skills, as I said earlier. And skilling should be a very serious business within the industry, a cause which should be taken up by the various industry leaders, various industry bodies, Pan India. Only then we will rise up and people will come here and invest in India, which is uh, the PM Modi's campaign also of Make in India. You know, so that's, that's Make in India all about, that world across people will come here put up their plants and machinery here and Indian people would be employed to make products for India as well as people abroad. Uh, the next one is by Divya Pillai. I want to update my skills in jewelry designing. From where can I learn these niche skills? Divya, you give us a call. Uh, you know, this is a bit of personal. But what I can say is to become an expert or to become a master of any skill, one has to practice that particular skill at least 10 hours a day. And if you, the day you complete your 1000 hours, that day you will be an expert. The day you complete your 10,000 hours, you will be a master. So that that's for Divya, then... Uh, yeah, in our... To get the best one. Which one is that? Uh, this question is incomplete. And ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, we got that. Uh, we have skilled labor that isn't cheap and cheap labor that isn't skilled. Shivram, uh, cheap labor, both of them are contradictive. Number one, any labor should not be cheap. I'm sure you have traveled abroad and Plumbers or electricians abroad, they charge by the hour. They take visitation fees. So even if your AC or your computer has nothing wrong and if they come and visit, still you got to pay them $50. I think something like this needs to be done. And the whole mentality of looking at people with skills and not just fancy degrees, that mentality needs to change. We need to look at a plumber with respect. We need to look at an electrician with respect. We need to look at a carpenter with respect. The day we start respecting their trade and their skills, definitely they will cease to be cheap. So labor is not going to be cheap and cheap is not a labor. Oh, da, da, da. In what areas are gems in? We have Milan Shah. In what areas in the gems industries there is a vacuum? Oh, no, every area, my friend Milan, every area we have a, a, a vacuum happening. For example, Theva jewelry. I don't know if you are from the industry, there is a form of jewelry called Theva, T H E W A. Now, as, as far as my knowledge goes, there are only four families in Bikaner who make this kind of a jewelry. And their children do not wish to come into this industry because of its unorganized nature. They don't want to waste their years. You know, that's what they think that they would be wasting. So these people need to be taken, put into a proper care, given the correct equipment and save the industry. Can you please share details of the e-learning? Program for JRSA, Mr. Shivram, uh, www.jewelryretail.in and you can go on that website and uh, uh, check out, get all the details. Uh, Neville Givala, does improvement of skills automatically improve entrepreneurial skills? 
I will not say so. I, uh, entrepreneurship is a skill all by itself. So if you are skilled, let's say, for example, in the art of jewelry making, but if you are not as skilled as an entrepreneur, chances are that person might fail. But if you are an entrepreneur and if you have the skill to be a jewelry manufacturer, these two things along with a proper theoretical knowledge, I think that's the key to success. Uh, which areas are there an abundance of skill? <clears throat> Forum Doshi, there is no area as such where there is an abundance. There is always a dearth of skilled people. So, uh, as far as the GJSCI and the Jemzen jewelry sector go, all the areas required skilled people. What are the courses conducted by GJSCI? Divya Pillai, you need to give us a call, please. Uh, next is by Sheetal Jabari. Hello, Mr. Bini, for this wonderful initiative and webinar. One be part of the initiative, Sheetal Zaveri, you can call us on 2829-3940 on Monday between 11 and 1. Uh, beneath her paymaster, she says, it seems like vocational institutions joining hands with manufacturing companies for imparting skills is the need of the hour. Is the skill council making efforts towards this? Yes, ma'am. We are 100% making very good progress and not only have we initiated things but we are making headways into this direction so you need to you know uh, keep update, updated with us on our website you will soon see various different initiatives by GJSCI towards uh, what you have asked uh, you know if our country it's by Ajay Maifatia if our country wants to move higher on the chart with other country what our large corporate should do to get the best performance from their skilled workers. <clears throat> if you call them skilled, you need to upskill. You need to give them more skills. If they are semi-skilled, you make them skilled and then you upskill them. So skilling has to be, again, as I said, continuous cycle in any organization. Adaptation of new technologies, new ideas, new processes. This is what an organization must look at. Adopt these new technologies, skill your workers, upskill them, bring them to an international level. This is what you know you need to do. Uh, Heman Shah, it seems your skilling programs are based only on technical skills. What about human and attitudinal skills? I believe we as a nation need to work on that. Uh, good point, sir. We do have uh, certain courses, uh, uh, programs, but none of them would justify what you have asked. So we'll make a point to note this and, you know, uh, initiate certain uh, programs into this also. Thank you so much. Uh, the next one is from Ramesh Daswani. Hi, Benit Ramesh. Having spoken various skill develop agencies, it seems there is a challenge of getting students who are interested. What's your comment? Why we are not getting students for these? Because of the mentality that a person who is skilled but does not have a fancy degree is a person without <coughs> much of a value in this society. I think it is this mentality, Mr. Daswani, which has uh, you know brought us to this level that a lot of people do not want to come come in for skilling programs. But everybody wants to run behind, you know, MBAs and engineering and CAs and medicine and all that. Second thing could be awareness. A lot of people are not even aware. So if they are made aware at a very young age, as I said earlier, in their schools about various skilling initiatives, various skill development programs and various skills available in which Later on, probably go, they can go ahead and excel. I think that is the need of the arms, last one. Uh, uh, there's one by Deepal Pandya. Is private sector participating in development of the skilling programs? Yes, private sector in some of the industries is very, very active in development of the skilling programs. Or is it something which is just driven and supported by the government of India? 
uh, it is both uh, deepal it is both the government has taken an amazing initiative probably since the last year and certain industries in india have always been skill driven but this is you know this has to come across span india the entire indian industry scenario must realize and recognize this as a challenge and face it you know that skilling and continuous skilling of their labor force is a must the industry should arbitrarily or mandatorily take in only skilled people you know so i think uh, we that brings us to a close and thank you so much jai hind uh there is one last question milan shah how is the government of fieo supporting the average artisan what about gjpc council for the jam industry promotion for such scheme uh milan time is very short i can give you detailed explanation on this probably you can come down to our office on this monday or after the next uh, thursday or give us a call on 28293940 or 41 Uh, thank you all for being with me and letting me share whatever i had to thank you so much jai hind thank you once again mr bhat for conducting this very informative webinar for all of us here i uh, hope it was good yes yes it was definitely on behalf of the entire team of jam atlas i would like to thank you and uh, djci for for giving us your time to to have this webinar here today uh would request everybody to fill up the feedback form which would appear once the session is uh, closed and ended uh you can also write back to us on info@jamatlas.com that's i n f o info@jamatlas.com if you have any suggestions or feedback with regards to this uh, webinar or any other topic that you would like to have the webinar on thank you so much once again everybody